Want an easy way to run your Commodore 64 emulator using the original hardware? Try turning your C64 into a USB keyboard. Let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. A while ago I bought myself a Commodore 64 case and keyboard and that was with a view to building a Raspberry Pi powered emulator. Now that project worked really well using a bare metal emulator running on a cheap Raspberry Pi Zero. And if you want to get the full story then please do have a look at the project video and I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But that was running as a standalone system and it had its own dedicated Raspberry Pi and a screen and it actually made it a bit awkward to use as I had to leave it out on my desk um, and, and I wasn't always able to do that so I wasn't getting as much use out of it as I wanted to. Now if you have seen a few of my other recent retro computer builds you'll know that I've been slowly moving towards um, turning my retro computers into USB keyboards and that's so that I can use them with a PC based emulator um, but in, in doing that I can also then still get the real computer feel by using the original hardware. So with this USB keyboard setup I've been having great fun with my ZX Spectrum and my ZX81 uh, and all you simply do is you, you have your retro computer with a little Arduino microcontroller inside it that plugs into a USB port on your PC. You simply then boot up your PC emulator and you've got a real retro computer sitting in front of you with all the facilities of a full fat emulator running on your main computer. So, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to turn a Commodore 64 keyboard and case, um, exactly the same as I have here then, into a USB keyboard for use with the VICE emulator. So let's have a look at what we need. So first off um, you're going to need some hardware. So I'm using an original Commodore 64C case and keyboard. Now I bought these as spare parts from a really reliable UK eBay seller. So I got a fully tested and working setup. Now the total cost for that was around about £50. Uh, but that's all the original parts that you're going to need. Now I'm not going to be hooking up original joysticks in this video um, but I'll instead be using um, just the PC's USB connections so that I can then add joypads into my gaming. Now the microprocessor as I've mentioned for this project will be the Arduino Pro Micro which just has enough IO ports but also supports the Arduino USB keyboard library which makes the coding of the USB interface incredibly easy. So you're going to need one of those. Now after that you'll need a 20 pin single row header and that's to connect the Commodore 64 keyboard. Uh, it, it comes with a ribbon cable with um, this um, type of connector at the end of it. Uh, and then if you do want to make the power LED on your 64 case um, turn on then you're going to need something like a 380 ohm resistor just as a little current limiting device for that. Other than that then, it's just really normal sort of circuitry stuff, so you're going to need some sort of um, prototyping board to build it up on, some hookup wire, some PCB standoff so you can stick it into the inside of your case, and, and so on. Now the USB circuit itself is, is fairly straightforward. The Commodore 64 keyboard uses a standard switch matrix with rows and columns to allow all 65 keys to be run from 18 IO pins on our microcontroller. Now, now 65 does seem a strange number for a computer but we basically have 64 keys plus then the restore key which is actually on its own row and column. Now the first stage of working out the circuit is to identify which keys are on which rows and columns. Now luckily there is a really great article at this web address here where um, Simon Inns has already worked out all of this for us. Now his key map is shown on the screen at the moment. Now as you can see we, we basically have an 8x8 eight eight matrix with then the restore key running from an almost separate row and column. Now on the diagram you can also see the Commodore 64 keyboard connector pinout with its 20 pin header. Now you, you will of course need to work out which pin is number one 
So there is actually, it is actually marked on the top of the connector and in a very small um, little marking on it. Um, but also you'll find that if you look at the pins, um, the hole for pin two is actually missing. So again, that will make, make it very easy to identify where pin one is. So we now need to work out how to connect these 18 IO signals to our Arduino Pro Micro. If we look at its pinout, um, you'll see a number of digital and other pins. Now, now, the great thing about this board is that almost all of the general IO pins can be set up as digital signals, and they also have internal pull-up resistors built in. So the circuit we'll use is this one here. So here we're connecting all of the row signals to digital outputs on the microcontroller, um, but these do need to go through small diodes to avoid feedback into the matrix when multiple keys are being pressed. Now the column inputs then get connected to digital inputs, um, but we will use the Arduino's internal pull up resistors to avoid us having to actually manually pull those up with some discrete components. Now the basic principle here is that we will initially have all of the row pins held high. The column pins will all float high through their pull-up resistors, so at this point pressing a key has actually no effect on the circuit. We then pull one, pin, one row pin low and then read the values on the column pins. So if a key on that row is being pressed, it will actually connect the low signal from the row line to the column line, um, and that will then pull that column line low. So if we read a low on any column, we know that the key on the active row that corresponds to the low column is actually being pressed in. We can then set all the rows back to high and then pull the next row pin low and see what keys are being pressed on that and, and so on. And that lets us then scan our keyboard matrix. So our keyboard matrix circuit then, it, it basically boils down to simply wiring the 18 keyboard lines to the IO pins on the Arduino. Now the only other thing then, um, if you, if you're Key, um, Commodore 64 case does have a power LED on it, you can just simply wire that up to the VCC and ground connections on the Arduino itself. And do make sure you use a current limiting resistor. Um, so I've used on mine uh, a 390 ohm resistor, but you want it around about the 400 ohms. So here you can see my completed circuit all built up. Now I do like to use this double-sided matrix board for prototyping. Um, it, it does allow me to place my components wherever I like and then just wire them up with this thin wire wrapping wire. Uh, and I find it a very quick and easy and flexible way of building up these circuits. So with that all um, built up, we just need some software. So the keyboard driver software is actually the same as I used in the ZX81 project, which was first written for my ZX Spectrum video. So if, if you want a full explanation of how the software works, then do please have a look at those two videos. Uh, the, the, the ZX Spectrum video covers the actual matrix driver code, which is the main bulk of the software. Uh, for the ZX81, I had to add an alternate key addition into the software, um, which was needed for one of the keys on that project. But we can go through the software just quickly to see what's going on here. Uh, so this is our Commodore 64 version. Uh, so first, of course, we define our I.O. pins, and then I'm just going to drop them into arrays so that we can easily cycle through them when we need to. Next, then, we define the button that's used to start the code. So remember, we said that we need that to stop it getting locked up. So I'm using row three, column A, which is that run stop key. Now then we set up our key matrix map. Now the Commodore 64 uses the standard keys, so the shifted alternate key matrix that I added for the ZX81 isn't used here. Um, so if you have a look through that, you'll see that I've got it filled with um, backslash zero values, and that just simply is a null value so that they do have no effect. Now, as you can see in the main matrix, I've matched the Commodore keys to the keys used by the VICE emulator. Now, now the mapping for that is shown on screen now. So, so basically, we pick one location on the key map, work out what that key relates to on the Commodore keyboard, 
Then look at the vice key map to work out what key we need to press on the PC keyboard to mimic that Commodore 64 key. And that is the key code that we enter into our key map in our code. Now the only awkward one was the actual equals key on the Commodore 64. So that's mapped to one of the PC keys that is actually different for US and UK keyboards. So if you look at the diagrams on screen at the moment, you can see that the key that's three to the left of the L key is a hash on my UK keyboard, but a backslash on the US version. Now the Arduino keyboard library sends its signals as key positions rather than the actual characters, but it is based on the US layout. So the Commodore 64 equals button, which again is three to the right of the L key, needs to be sent as the backslash code to match up with the US layout. Now, other than that, all the key positions are actually common. Um, but if you are using another country keyboard layout, then just do the same sort of thing. Just simply work out which key position you need to send and then send the US keyboard version of that into our PC. So with our key map created, uh, we then get to the main bulk of the actual code. Now I've used two objects to model the individual keys and then the keyboard matrix. So this first object, uh, the keyboard key object, that handles a single key and it monitors its state and then does the sending of the press and release signals to the PC. It also handles the keyboard um, debouncing and if needed then it would handle the alternate key functionality which as I did not mention isn't used on the Commodore 64 version. So the second object then is this matrix driver and that runs the actual matrix. So it simply activates each row line in turn and then asks the individual keys um, handled by that keyboard key object then to run their um, checks and then send out their states. So next we have our setup procedures. Um, so this has an initial pause built into it. So the, the USB keyboard library can actually take over the USB port. So if your Arduino does crash, it can actually lock you out from using the USB port to reprogram the board. So, so basically what would happen is you would turn on the board, it crashes, and you're left without any ability to communicate with it and reflash a new piece of software. Now there are ways to reset that but it is quite awkward. So what we're doing here is our code will initially sit waiting for you to press a key on the keyboard before starting the USB section of the code. And again, as we saw the de definitions earlier on, I've set that then to be the run stop button. So finally then we get to the Arduino main loop code and that simply asks the matrix driver object then to scan the keyboard. It then waits for one milliseconds and then starts the next scan. Now all of this code, I'll drop that into a repository on my GitHub account and then I'll put a link to that down in the video description. So you can just go and download the code and hopefully that will then just work straight off for you. So with all that created, uh, let's get this uploaded into our Arduino, plug everything together and see if it works. So to get this all set up, um, we first need to plug the um, Commodore 64 ribbon cable onto our Arduino board. We then need to attach our Arduino to our PC over USB. And then we need to just simply upload that sketch. So if, if, you are, if you're not sure how to do all of this, then please do have a look at my Arduino starters guide. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description rather than showing it here, uh, as I will be updating that video very soon. Uh, so please, please have a look in the description. That will link off to, to my, my current um, Arduino starter guide. So um, once we've got that uploaded, um, I'm going to turn on the serial monitor because it does uh, output a few little messages as we go through. Uh, and as we're now running, if I press the run stop key, we should get it reporting back that it is now running the actual USB keyboard. Um, during testing, don't, don't worry about disconnecting your normal PC keyboard because uh, it, it will be able to run with both plugged in at the same time and both will work. So we now need to boot up our VICE emulator. Uh, again, um, I have made videos on how to get that all set up, uh, so do have a look at those. Uh, and that will then drop us into our Commodore 64 mode. So let's just make that full screen. Uh, and we should now be able to use our real keyboard as a real Commodore 64. 
So if I start typing out a little program here, we should find that all of our keys are working and we should be able to, um, well, in effect, it's we now have a, a real Commodore 64 in front of us and that is running the emulator on the screen. Now, now you do, you may well get some problems with this. Uh, the most likely cause is is a wiring error. To be honest, um, there isn't a lot more that can go wrong with the circuit. Um, so usually this will be characterised by you seeing random characters appearing um, that don't match up with the keys as you press them. So do just go through and check your wiring, check for short circuits, uh, and so on. Um, so, um. <laughs> Well, that's basically our Commodore 64 now up and running as a USB keyboard. Now, now don't forget that it is mapped to the vice keys. So although a lot of the keys will be the same as on a PC keyboard, you won't be able to replace your PC keyboard and run it from a Commodore 64. Um, obviously, you could then redo the keyboard mapping in the matrix and turn it into a PC keyboard. Um, but then, of course, it won't work as a Commodore 64 in vice. So it's, it's, it's entirely up to you. But as I say, in, in terms of allowing us to emulate a real Commodore 64 using our full powered vice emulator running on our PC, for, for me, it gives a great solution and, and one that lets me get much more fun out of my system. So on, on that note, I will be making a video about what you can actually do with the Commodore 64 and emulation. And that's going beyond just using it to play games. We, we, we all know that we can use these to power up and play games, but there is so much more that you can do with your Commodore 64 and to really get a feel for that retro computing in the 1980s. So, so please do subscribe to the channel to get notified when I release that and any other videos. If you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to click that like button as it really does help the channel grow. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.